G'day and welcome to my channel and welcome to this video series on making electricity from wood. Well, you're not going to believe it. We flooded in yet again, but at least this time uh, we haven't lost power. But just in case we did, I ended up buying a new generator. It's a 9 kVA. The good thing about that is that um, it allows me to weld and make coffee at the same time. I guess you've got to look after the important things in life. I guess it's been a while since the last video uh, and that's because this part of their build has been rather fiddly and time consuming. But if you have a look over there, you'll see there's something new lurking underneath the gasifier. Let's take a look. So underneath the gasifier is the great agitator drive. And there's also some new things inside the gasifier. And what is new here is the grate and the floor scrapers among things. One other thing that's worth mentioning, just a little thing, is I made some hinge pins. I got rid of the hex bolts and I made one of these little pins I thought might be worth showing. So it's just made of, of a bit of flat bar. I cut out with a hole saw, drilled a 10 mil hole in it. I then welded in a bit of 10 mil round bar, centered the top back on the linisher and then I gave it a bluing treatment and that's it and uh, that hole there is for a split pin looks a lot nicer than the hex bolt so anyway there's been plenty going on why don't I show you I think we'll start with the grate So this thing's all bent up, literally speaking. I got it pretty close to the uh, diameter that I was after. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to use these leftovers from when I was making some flanges. These are pretty much the diameter that I'm after. So I'm just going to clamp it to these. And uh, yeah, I think they'll work out pretty good. With this thing all clamped to this bit of form, so I think I'll just make a mark in the middle of the overlap and uh, that's where I'll cut them. There you go, that's pretty much the grain. Um, hasn't turned out too bad. So I'll just flip it over. So it's got 10 more gaps, which I think is more than sufficient. So I'm just going to press this bronze bush, try and say that really quickly, into the floor here. And uh, this is for the agitator shaft. Uh, what I got here is just a bit of uh, 12 mil chrome shaft, sort of stuff you would use for, uh, I don't know, a CNC or 3D printer. So I just put on a tiny amount of high temperature sealant, just to be sure we get a 
a good seal. So next is the bush in the grate, and of course that doesn't need any sealant. Beautiful. All right, so next I've just got to make up some brackets to fix the grate to the outer body or the accumulator. I've just got it sitting on some uh, blocks here. Um, that is the correct height off the floor. So I just need to center it, and I'm just going to do that by pushing the shaft through. Now I'll center it. There we go. So I'm just fixing the grate to the gasifier body and uh, I just made these brackets ground smooth on one side so it, it sits flush with these brackets. So the next thing is I've got to attach this thing to that 12mm shaft that goes through the gasifier. The output shaft of this gearbox is a 14mm keyed shaft. So next, I've got to connect this 14mm shaft to the 12mm shaft that goes through the gasifier. And uh, for that, I'm going to use one of these couplings. Flexible spider coupling, I think they're called. This coupling here has only got 12mm holes, so I'll just drill the other end out to 14mm. Now because the shaft from the gearbox is keyed, um, I have to make a cutout in this to accommodate that key. I don't have any broaching tools because of that I'm having to improvise. So I'm just going to do it using a hacksaw and files. I've been cutting and filing away at this thing so I'm just going to tap this through slightly or lightly. Wasn't exactly lightly, but oh, come on. Oh, we're getting there. Gone in a bit and skew if. Come on, get back out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's getting there. So rather than bashing this thing through, I thought I might just have a crack at just slowly pressing it through. What could possibly go wrong? As long as I don't break this thing. That's through. Okay, that went quite easy. Oh, look at that. I made this pair of brackets. It's just made out of flat bar, a bit of 25mm square hollow section. Um, I just ended up welding a bit of uh, flat bar on both the ends uh, just to cap them off because uh, if you don't do that, this will become the home for multiple mud wasps and hornets and whatnot. So what I've got to do now is I've just got to make some sort of bracket that attaches to the gearbox and to these brackets here. So yeah, I'll probably just be making that out of flat bar also.
Oh yeah, let's see how this thing fits. That's it. Just a few holes in here. This is the 12 mil end of the coupling. Um, this is the part that takes the uh, 12 mil non-keyed shaft. And this being on the uh, output of the gearbox, um, there's the potential for quite a lot of torque there. So I thought it was probably better that I put in a, a set screw. So it's pretty simple really. I just drilled and tapped a M5 hole in the coupling. And I also drilled into the shaft slightly with a 5 mil drill bit. Probably a bit hard to see, but I also um, put a chamfer on the end of the screw. So it actually goes into the shaft a little bit. It locks in there. I don't think the coupling or this shaft is ever likely to slip. So anyway, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Brackets are all in place. So I just made up this bit of plate here and that's going to be matched to the gearbox flange. This gearbox flange is for um, directly mounting it to a DC motor. But in this case, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to be using an automotive windscreen wiper motor. So I'm just going to attach this bit of plate to that and then somewhere around here there's going to be another plate which will be for the windscreen wiper motor. So I'm just going to uh, join these two plates together just with a bit of flat bar. And this is the donor car. It's a Mitsubishi Mirage. It's been in the family for 22 years and uh, only just recently we've uh, taken the plates off it. So I'm just going to grab whatever parts of it that I need uh, before we get rid of it. First up, of course, the windscreen wiper motor. And here's the engine. Uh, I'll be using that too for the generator. It's a 1.5 litre, 4 cylinder, 3 valves per cylinder. It's still in really good nick. Rightio, I've uh, figured out the wiper motor, the um, circuit of it, what's, uh, what is the low speed and high speed circuit, so to speak. So what the plan was, I was just going to thread this threaded rod coupling onto the output shaft like so. Thread a bit of a 8mm shaft in there. Um, a flexible type spider coupling in, in between here. And then going into uh, the input of the gearbox, uh, then sleeve it up to 11mm. Using one of these um, 8 to 11mm uh, adapter sleeves. Anyway, um, as it turns out, um, the output shaft here is indeed 8mm, but it's fine metric. Uh, the coupling I've got here is coarse metric, so it's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. So I think what I'll do instead, um, I'm going to have to use the fine metric nut. So um, this is the crank that used to sit here. That, which converts it from rotary motion to reciprocating. So I butchered the crank and uh, the bit that fits on the bevel spline here, I, uh, I ground this back. So I'm just going to whack that in there because with that being in there it means that the, the nut will sit in the position on the thread where it's really meant to be like so and then I'm just going to weld this um, rod coupling to the nut and then thread the shaft in place and so forth so forth all right confession time I gotta say I'm absolutely rubbish at cutting external threads I had a go at this 8mm shaft. I find it in particular difficult to get it started. And then once you do get it started, quite often I tend to get the first bit of the thread crooked. So I stuff around with this one a little bit. So this is sort of a chrome steel shaft. And um, yeah, I just found it really hard going. So in the end, I cheated. Uh, I came up with this. And what this is, it's just... I just cut the head of a stainless steel socket cap head screw, cut the head off it, and cut a bit of thread off, and uh, do you know what? If it works, that's good enough for me. Look at that. Coupling goes on, voila.
Rightio, here we go. It's all installed. It's it's come together quite nice. Um, I'm actually quite happy with this. Um, I've never done anything like this before. The two shafts actually line up really well. So I'm very pleased with this. So I just couldn't help myself. So I've just connected it up to some power. So we're just gonna run it. So that's low speed. So just to give you an idea of I'll just place this on the shaft, you can see. Now, that's moving quite slowly, but once I build the agitator for the grain, it'll make sense. All right, here goes the high speed. This one's um, a fair bit quicker. And look at that, there's no wobble, or hardly any wobble on the shaft. I'm very happy with that. So I've just made this attachment for the scraper. That's an M6 hole for your set screw. So I'm just going to slide it down on this. And I'm just going to mark where the set screw goes. So I drilled a bit of hole in the shaft, just a shallow hole. And then I've chamfered, or beveled the end of this set screw. So you see that? That fits in quite nicely, so there shouldn't be any slipping there, hopefully. These are the scrapers. They just fabricated from 40 by 3 mil flat bar. So they've been drilled and uh, I've bent them on the press brake. So I'm not doing these up tight because um, I want them to be able to move around a bit um, just in case you hit something you know there's a few few rough rough patches or anything like that that way they're also less likely to jam up. Once I'm happy with it and um, once this thing's ready to go I'll uh, double nut them or lock nut them but this is just to see how it turns. Alright, so I've just thrown some nuts down there just to see whether it actually works, whether it's going to push them out towards the outside. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Well, one's in. Stuck here. Whoa. Okay, well, steel nuts are not the same as bloody biochar, that's for sure. Alright, I think I've I think I've proved it. It works. Jeez, that's jammed in alright. Come on, get out. That's it. All right, well, I think that's a result. This is the center bit for the agitator. Put a six mil set screw in it. So what I want to do now is I just want to round the top off a bit.
So here it is. That's the agitator. I've got to say, it was quite fiddly welding all of this. But uh, yeah, I don't think it turned out too bad actually. There she goes, look at that. I'll be waiting for this for quite a while. So I guess, sort of at a first glance, it does look like the thing is quite slow. It uh, rotates quite slowly and uh, you sort of think, oh well, is, is that really gonna do much? The reason why I wanted something that was quite slow, I didn't want a great agitator producing charcoal dust. So I knew whatever I came up with, it would have to be uh, quite gentle. So that's why I did this. So if you have a look at the great agitator, you can see that if it only had one finger, you would have to rotate it a fair bit quicker. But because this has eight fingers, I think I can get away with it rotating this slow because you have got eight fingers stirring up the uh, hot charcoal. There's only one way to find out, but uh, yeah, I'm not quite there yet. So I've just painted the frame, the brackets and stuff out for the agitator drive. I'll put this together, get it back in the gasifier and we're done. Before I put this thing back in the gasifier and it goes out of sight, I thought I'd just include a couple of close-ups. pretty much the great and the great agitator done. So strictly speaking now, this unit uh, is now properly capable of producing gas, provided I put enough distance between the gas outlet and the blower. But I'm going to remain patient and uh, I'm going to continue down the path of the process. So in the next episode, we'll do the cyclone separator. So until then, Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Cheers.